from the J.C. Newman Cigar Studio in Boston, Massachusetts, and the Gurkha Cigar Studio in beautiful British Columbia. Welcome to the Smokin' Tobacco Show with your hosts, Matt Tobacco and Mitchell Santaga. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Smokin' Tobacco Show. My name is Matt Tobacco from SmokinTobacco.com, and also of SmokinTobacco.com, it is our good friend Mitchell joining us north of the border in beautiful British Columbia in the Gurkha Cigar Studios. Mitchell, how are you? It's good to see you, you know? I haven't uh, seen you in a little while. Someone uh, missed out on last week's show. And, yeah, uh, you know, when the kid gets sick, it's uh, it's hard to, to show up. I, You know, my babysitters and stuff don't tend to want to look after kids that are coughing and sneezing on them all night, so that comes into my duty. So, unfortunately, I missed a really fun show. I, I got to comment a bit. and you did. And a few of my two cents. But, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a fun show. The, uh, the A cuffs aren't here though. So unless they're watching mm-hmm. secretly in the background, so I'll just, I think I can get away with this one. So your, your grandpa came in and filled in for you. <laughs> 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 oh man. Yeah. I'm going to get it from a... Barbara though, as soon as, cause she'll watch this later and I'm going to, I'm going to get a phone call. It's not going to be good, but I think I'd sneak it in bit, now. A little bit of age saying... on that show. A little bit of age. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Look at you! Look at you being Mr. Uh, throwing jabs. You're, you know, you're like I. I I'm surprised you don't live in Switzerland because you're so fucking neutral all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, occasionally. And uh, it's good to me, don't it? You know. Next time you see Kevin, you should be like, oh yeah, you look like one of those like five year age post roll. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just uh, he's a ten. He's a ten year out of it. You know. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> oh man! Oh, that's quality, bringing it up. Quality, quality man, but he says, you know. Got, then got then you gotta go in there and be like, "Yo, Kevin, only the best cigars are aged, you know." Exactly. <laughs> like, only the, he'll be like, "I don't care." <laughs> like, you you're, like, you're, you're trying to reel it back in, but I'm like, "I don't care." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the damage yeah. is done. <laughs> the damage is done. The damage is done. Oh boy! Well, we have a fun show tonight with you. Um, we're not gonna have kind of the same conversation we had last week, but uh, we are gonna welcome on uh, some good friends of ours. Um, from Two Guys Smoke Shop. And uh, they have um, an event. So I'll let him tell the whole story, but they have an event that they're going to be uh, kicking off for the first time in a few weeks. It's called the New England Cigar Expo. And so our friend Dan is here with us tonight. And Dan is going to tell us all about it, all about what they have in store for you. Definitely want to tune into this. If you like cigar events, especially if you can travel around the country to cigar events, you're going to want to listen to this one because I know Dan's got a lot on the plate here. Dan! I think this is your first time on the Smoking Tobacco Show, so welcome to the show. Yeah, first time having me on. Great to be here. Great to see you guys virtually. It's been a minute since uh, it's my last time in Vegas, but glad to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Sorry, as I try to light my oh, cigar thank you. here. <laughs> thank you for joining. Yeah, it's uh, you know, not not often do we do we get to talk about you know obviously a lot of the times it's it's very product heavy or, or brand brand heavy not often do we get to talk about you know these events that so many people want to go to and uh you know kind of hyping them up and what they're all about and so many people fly in all around to to go to these and to know what's what's going to be there before you get to actually experience it and also kind of you know it definitely puts in a little fomo for the people who either a missed out on buying tickets or if the event's already sold out you know it kind of hypes it even for next year about what what can be even better for next year but uh yeah yeah absolutely i mean that's kind of the fun part of you know being a cigar smoker there's so many fun activities that you can do it's not just you know hanging out at your local store or with your friends at home there's tons of event opportunities for you around the country and uh you know we found that there was uh a lack of a big uh tentpole event like this in new england and we figured this is the perfect time to do it so uh yeah excited uh, to put the show on, it's going to go on in two weeks, uh, September 29th and 30th in Wyndham, New Hampshire, first New England Cigar Expo. Yeah, so I I don't want to get too deep in because we have a couple of things we have to hit to before we kind of you know get really into the uh, into the meat of this uh, conversation. Um, but I know that uh, this is the first time you guys are doing this. But as a local to the area who knows the shop and whatnot. Um, you know, what used to happen was the anniversary party, which is around like 500 people, if I remember correctly. 
Um, yeah. But that event I know has been challenging to put on. So instead you guys were like, well, let's scrap the anniversary party. Let's double down, go bigger and do an even bigger and better event um, that we can put in probably a more cigar smoking friendly area. Um, I remember when you guys had the uh, the press conference for this back. I want to say it was Valentine's Day, wasn't it? In February? Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember Valentine's that. Valentine's Day, yep. So um, it's exciting to, for me, especially. It's exciting to see because you know I've been to those events before. You know I, I know all the people there, and um, so it's cool to to see some to see you guys kind of double down and go bigger and, and do do some some crazy stuff. It's exciting for me. But before we get into that, let's talk about what we're smoking tonight. Our cigars are brought to you by. You want to take a guess, Dan? This might this might be easy for you. I don't know. I'd want to kill the suspense, you know. Well, only f- from the number two guys cigars dot com. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. what can I say? I mean, these are the guys. I mean, if you want quality premium handmade cigars, you got to go to two guys cigars dot com. That's the number two guys cigars dot com. If you head over there today. You can find an amazing selection of cigars and cigar accessories from all over the industry only at the number 2 cigars.com. And I am going to start us off really quickly because I already kind of have everything in front of me. I am smoking from our friends at J.C. Newman uh, a Diamond Crown Julius Caesar Toro. Now, you can, gu- you can buy this cigar at 2 cigarscom for $18.99 or a box for $339.99. Um, Diamond Crown, obviously, this is one of the best premium cigars it's on the so market good. for the money. So it's good. rolled by the Fuente family at Tabacalera Fuente Sia, uh in the Dominican Republic. Uh, these cigars are fantastic. And Mitchell, I know that you are smoking something Dominican over there as well. What do you got going on over there? I've got a United. Well, I know that, man. The, the United. This is actually the new one. So previously, I think United had this as a box breast, and this is the Toro Natural. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is the first time that I'm trying it in the, in the round, in the round. That's right. The rounds nice. came out this year. Uh, yeah. and those are good. I've smoked a few of those already. Those are good. You can pick those up. I believe the natural and the Maduro's, um, eight ninety nine. two guys, cigars.com, a box. will set you back one fifty two ninety nine. Yeah. It's very, you know, very affordable and, yeah. you know, price nice point balance. wise, it's, it's great, but Really great cigars. Really great cigars. I mean, they're great quality. I've bought in boxes of these before. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with these. Uh, and then, Dan, I didn't yeah. think you were smoking with Are you smoking with us tonight? I'm not smoking with you tonight, unfortunately. I'm in, uh, you know, the weather was questionable down here in Rhode Island. So uh, I was going to smoke the Garofalo Maduro La Familia. Oof. Uh, but unfortunately, I'll have to smoke that uh, when I take off after the show. But. Yeah, no, uh, the United in the Round uh, came out this year. If you haven't had a chance to try the reblended United Natural Maduro uh, in the Round, not only did we change the format from a box press to the Round, but also the blend was enhanced. They're really great, definitely worth checking out, and great price. You said eight ninety nine for a Toro, tough to beat. It is, it is tough to beat, and you know, at the quality that you get at that price point, uh, there's only a handful of cigars that come to mind. You know that you know they come close to that and and you know are very comparable so sure. it's it's you know especially nowadays everything gets so expensive you're seeing a lot more cigars over ten dollars over fifteen dollars or twenty dollars you just still find cigars under ten dollars at a great quality i mean it, it really is it truly is tough to beat um and tonight as always i sh- well maybe not as always because it's kind of new but for me it's always been because ever since i was a young cigar smoker these guys have been good to me. We're, and Mitchell, I know you don't have yours with you, but uh, that's okay. I have mine. We're lighting and cutting tonight with our friends from ST DuPont. ST DuPont, be exceptional. You wanted the best, you got the best. Featuring some of the best cigar accessories in the business, from the famous Line 2 to the always reliable Maxi Jet. Their cutters are some of the sharpest cutters I have ever used. ST DuPont, be exceptional. Um, all right, so... Dan, let's get back to you now that we've done all that. <laughs> um, like I was saying yeah, you before, gotta pay the bills, man, you, know? you got you got to pay the bills. You know that's how that's how we're here. Yeah. Without you know, <laughs> yeah. hey, um, hey, you know, I, I I do a show every week. I know how it works. It's yeah, fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, like I was saying before, 
um, the segments. I know one of the things was, you know, the anniversary party that kind of became this. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to that kind of like the the original yeah. ideas to like how did the New England Cigar Expo come to be? Like, what was the turning point where it was like, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore, but we don't want to not do an event. So like, what do we do now? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you, you said, we mentioned it when we did our launch press conference back in February to talk about the New England Cigar Expo. And, you know, David mentioned, you know, they've been doing the two guys anniversary party for 38 years. Last year would have been 37. And it was tougher and tougher for Dave to find a venue uh, because typically the event would be at like a wedding facility, like a banquet hall or a country club that you can smoke indoors. And, you know, in the Northeast, it's becoming harder and harder to find a venue where you can host for, you know, 500 people for a cigar event inside. So um, after the event last year, they went to a new venue and they loved the, the people loved it, but they were like, thanks, but we don't want to do it again. So it was a challenge to find a new venue. And luckily we found one pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, when, when Dave and I started talking about making this bigger event was the anniversary party is an awesome event. If you've never been before for your listeners every year, it was a full blown cigar dinner. You got, uh, Depending on the amount of cigar manufacturer there, it was probably 16 to 18 cigars. They had given away uh, DeLorean and then given away uh, Smokey and the Man of Trans Am. Great, uh, unbelievable prizes, a great time. And we didn't want to lose that experience. We wanted to enhance it. And the next logical step with the venue that we found uh, at the Dreamers Ranch in Wyndham, New Hampshire, was to make it a two day full blown um, expo style event. Uh, Part of that is the venue uh, has a much larger capacity. I think it maxes out at around 1,500, but we've scaled that down just because we want this is the first year um, to get it going. Um, it's a beautiful farm. So it's kind of, it's when I say it's a tent, it sounds like it's like a tent you would rent from a wedding facility. This is like a permanent structure tent. I was in there two weeks ago when we've had all these monsoons and you would have thought you were in a house. So if this is like to call it a tent until you see it is, is crazy. Um, so, but so we found the I have a question about the it. tent. Is it, yeah. is it like actually like fully walled down to the ground with like the tent fabric and then like zipped up or is it like semi open structure? It could, it, it could be, it's a, it's basically the wrap I think is like a vinyl material, you know what I mean? Like a very durable material, but it's, it has the ability to be open. It has some panels that are windows, like they're clear sides. So uh, it has the ability to be both, but it's like a full metal skeleton with a foundation, like in the ground with a full um, stage and production facility inside the stage um, because it's, it's used by Crossing Life Church to do service they and they broadcast uh, all the time from there so it's a it's a big it's a big facility so uh, you know that being said it made sense to not only do the anniversary party uh style event but also make it a full-blown expo like cigar uh, enthusiasts have been to around the country and we can bring it right to new england yeah it's true i mean there's a lot of them that come to mind um we were actually talking about this on spare notes over the weekend. It was, there's a lot of them because Kevin had just gotten back from Rocky mountain out in Colorado. You know, there's, there's that there's uh, Abe does the, the, the great smoke experience for, you know, the smoke yeah. in stores. And then you have all these like cigar fest weeks that are not even, even tied to retailers. They're just, they're just these, just a little pop-up big smoke in Las Vegas. Well, big smoke is cigar aficionado, yep. but, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's all these like festivals. Some of them are like weekends. Some of them are a whole week long, like Atlanta cigar week, and Charlotte yeah. cigar week. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, no matter what it is, they're bigger events. They're big cigar events that people will travel to. They flock all over, um, to go to, um, but we, yeah, you're right. We, and we never really had that up here. I mean, we've had some good events. I mean, like the no. anniversary party, um, you know, some of the other shops near around have, have some like anniversary parties and yeah. stuff like that, but never like, never really like a big event. Um, right. and now that we kind of have that, 
it's exciting, and I'm, my hope that it goes well and it goes so well that it gets even bigger next year. Uh, which it might be too early. To, it might be too early to ask this question, but just kind of based on what you guys have done so far with only a few weeks to go, um, do you, do you think that do you think that the event will be even bigger next year? Or do you think you kind of stay with this size? I think I, I think you uh, you got to play it by ear, right? And that being said, I do think it'll be bigger next year, absolutely. Um, but I think when it comes to doing events, whether you're doing an in-store event as a retailer or doing a two to three day event as you know a media company like uh, you know like a cigar aficionado, big smoke, like you know, it, it, they all started as something, right? right. And it probably wasn't. 3,000, 4,000 people the first year. You know, when I uh, used to do events when I was in retail in New York, uh, one of the 10 pull events we did every year was Repros. The first year I did it, I had 40 people there, you know, because it was basically a beta to see if, okay, this is uh, a new thing. I want to see if it works. It really wasn't about uh, drawing money, it was about providing a new experience to our customers. And it was a success and it doubled the next year. Um, that's from a smaller event, from an event this size, um, I think that it will grow. And also that's part of why we picked the venue we did was because it has the opportunity to expand as the event expands as well. So we have room to grow versus a uh, traditional banquet hall or wedding facility that you're only gonna get 500 people. If you get 10,000 people interested, you're not gonna get that, you know what I mean? There's no room for growth in terms of the space itself. Right. Um, so I definitely think, uh, based on how it's gone this year, which has been great, um, VIP sold out the first day. I actually sold out the first 10 minutes of going on sale. Um, the two day tickets, uh, which will, I believe, uh, pretty sure will be sold out tomorrow. Uh, so if, if there's a handful of them left. Um, so if you go to twogoodcigars.com, where you can get your cigars so you can get the event tickets they'll be there um those are about to be sold out and we'll have one day tickets available as well so i have a couple of graphics here that i'm going to bring up on screen uh this sure. is for, this is for night one um and it kind of yeah. details everything that's kind of going on i don't know if you want to like kind of walk through um some of the things that are going to happen yeah. on night one yeah for sure so uh the new star expo is two day event right so we had three ticket tiers when we started this. We had a VIP, a two-day ticket, and a one-day ticket. Now, VIP is already sold out. Like I said, there's only a handful of two-day tickets left. So the only way you can get to night one is if you had a two-day ticket of the few that are left and the people who are already gone. Uh, the one-day tickets are for Saturday. So to start with night one, uh, it's gonna start at six o'clock and you're gonna get 18 cigars the first day if you're not a VIP holder uh, because a two-day ticket, you're going to get 38 cigars total, but you're only going to get 18 on the first night. You're going to get the rest of the next day. So you get 18 cigars from all kinds of different manufacturers. I know we'll go over the list later on, but just to name a few quick, you, you know, Pedro is going to be there. Uh, Altidus is going to be there. United, Selected Tobacco, uh, Aganorza, tons of brands are going to be there. Yeah, you and got quite the so lineup starts up. Yeah, yeah. We'll, I know we'll get into it after. but Yeah, uh, we will. Yeah, so the event starts at 6 and starts with a cocktail hour meet and greet with all the brand owners who will be in attendance. So be able to hang out and mingle with some of those guys, grab a drink from the bar, uh, and just hang out. And then uh, we'll have a prime room dinner. It's a plated uh, dinner. So it's not a buffet. And also be uh, appetizers during that cocktail hour. We'll have some live comedy. And then, Matt, you've been to the anniversary party. And we wanted to keep basically night one and that a throwback to the anniversary party. So it's the same style where you have a chance to win a big prize. This year, it's to win a cow. This is an 800 pound cow that's butchered. You get two sides of uh, a cow and uh, a cubic, 16 foot cubic freezer that will be drop shipped if you win it. Or you can always take the cash cow, but you gotta be there to win, obviously. Right. Um, and the, the, and the cow uh, actually comes from where we're going to be doing the event at Dreamers Ranch, which is a cow farm, grass fed beef. Uh, along with that, yeah, there'll be some special gifts, some prizes and some surprises that night as well. Yeah. You can't go wrong with fresh, with uh, fresh beef and 
you know. Especially all that meat too. That's that's a lot of meat. Oh, <laughs> delicious. Oh yeah. That, yeah, Damn. that is like amazing. <laughs> Uh, I like it's so cool that they're they're giving you the freezer and drop shipping it to you as well. It's like you know as long as you got the space to, yeah. to store the freezer, like it's kind of like a no fuss thing. They're uh, they're they're butchering the whole thing for you, as I assume as well, right? Like into yeah. cuts and ground yeah. beef and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a butchered cow, so you get pretty much a little bit of everything, and the freezer itself can fit one half. So if you decide to take the cow. You'll, you can take one half that day, and then when you finish that half, you can go back to the Dreamers Ranch and get the second half. So, there you know, you, you don't have to take it all at once. If you have all the room, you can take it, but it's up to you. So uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, especially as the uh, price of beef keeps going up. Dude, the price of food through the oh, roof. I know. I know. Beef is going to be like a like a luxury delicacy at some point. It's just, I mean, it kind of already <laughs> yeah. is, but like, but like, it you know is, what I mean? Yeah. Like even, even like even more so though, it's like, it's going to be beef. like, ground beef is like a delicacy almost right now. For <laughs> I know. It's, wild. it's crazy. It, it was a time when like you made hamburger helper because like it was cheap, it was quick. And now I'm making hamburger helper is like, damn, that's a luxury. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah. It's, what's, it's, what's, it's, uh, it's crazy. What's your favorite cut, cut of, uh, of beef, Dan? New York strip. I'm the same. I also, that is, you know, a lot of people go with the tomahawk. I love the New York strip. I was going to say, mine's a tomahawk. I, yeah. The tomahawk. Yeah. No, tomahawk's a very common one. It's good. <laughs> is that a break yeah, right there? I, I, I love New York strip. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He, he owns everything now these days, this guy. Who, Bert? Man, he's everywhere. Oh, yeah, dude. he's everywhere. Yeah, he's, Raz, he's, that's right. What's the, what's the name of his store? Yeah, the Razzle Dazzle. I just love. I don't oh, know if you geez. saw his. I don't know if you saw his most recent special, where there was the Razzle Dazzle special is what he called it. But he, he tells a story. Where he goes to like this raffle, and like all the parents didn't want to buy the raffle tickets, so he like bought like all seven hundred raffle tickets, and he like won all the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like taking his shirt off, and he's like, "Yeah, read them and weep." <laughs> that dude is insane. Jeez. <laughs> that's hey, that's the secret. You see the people all the time, you know. Raffles, you know, people be mystified when one or two guys would win everything. I'm like, guys, it's probability. He bought two hundred dollars worth of tickets. You bought ten dollars worth of tickets. Most likely, you're not going to win as much. But he Most won 100 percent for it. So there you go. Well, it's like our um, it's like our um, our raffle that we do every year for CFCF and. You yeah. know, we, we, we got one we got one guy the first two years that donated like ten grand. Uh and he got ten thousand dollars worth of raffle tickets and you know you oh, know, wow. it, it's like, you know, the first year the, 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 the total in, in actual ticket sales we did was like twenty five thousand. So he had like a yeah. little bit less than half of all of the tickets. So it was wow, it great. was it was nuts. It was nuts. But uh yeah, no, it, it's it's true. Um sorry, excuse me. Getting back Getting back to the topic at hand, uh, you know, we talked about night one, um, which is exciting. And, and night one to me sounds a lot like what the anniversary party was. I mean, there was the dinner, you had the cocktail yeah. hour, you had the you had the the um, the prizes and the and just Dave doing his whole like game show thing, which I think is probably one of the best things. If anyone hasn't ever experienced that, I mean. And Dan, I know you know, but I mean, I, I remember the last time I went, it was a few years ago. It was right before COVID, actually. And I think, it, what year was it? It was the it was the trip to Vegas year. And, um, you know, you, you get down to like those last like six people and he's just like, I'll give you, I'll give you 10 grand cash or whatever it is. And they're like, no, I want the trip. Yeah. And they're like, all right. And they pull the next ticket. It's like, I will give you 12 grand cash. Take it or leave it. Or do you want to win the prize? And it's just, it's so exciting. And yeah, everyone just screaming, take yeah. it, take it, take it. And then you got the, no, hold no. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, come on. It's even when you don't have like any like yeah. skin in the game, you're just like, damn. <laughs> yeah. No, it's unbelievable, honestly. So like last year was the first year I met when I was, uh, when I was still with all this. And yeah, I had never been, I mean, I knew about the event. I'd seen all the photos and stuff, but I, and I knew like, about the game show, but I never actually saw it work. And it was the most awesome thing I've ever watched because everyone gets into it. It turns into this whole crazy screaming match between 
people not participating in the crowd and the people there, <laughs> people begging each other to take the money and walk. It's you, you got to see it in person because I, I've never seen anything like that at a cigar event, and I've been to a lot of them. So it's that's why we wanted to make sure that it was a part of the expo because it's such a great experience, the anniversary party, and we wanted to continue that experience even through uh, doing the Cigar Expo as it basically evolved into that. And also there's other nods to uh, two guys in the expo as well, like the 38 cigars you're going to get if a two-day ticket or a VIP. It's 38 years of uh, two guys this year so right right which wow i can't believe it i can't believe it's it's been around i mean it around longer than i've been alive but still it's just Same. it's <laughs> yeah yeah, but, almost, right? yeah. <laughs> everyone except like like dave and ed sullivan <laughs> yeah um but yeah no yeah, i he mean just, he just had a birthday today too, Ed. so oh is it today happy birthday ed Oh shit! Yeah, Ed Sullivan's birthday. Today. Oh, happy birthday! Ed. Happy birthday, Ed Sullivan. He's you know he's one of the greatest guys. I think he's in too. Italy right now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, happy birthday, Ed Sullivan. Um, thanks for reminding me about that. Um, but uh, we're gonna get on to day two here, which I'll bring this graphic up here. And so this is kind of yep. the uh, the layout for for day two. So Dan, walk us through here what we what we got going on. For sure. So uh, day two is going to start at 11 a.m. This is Saturday. So just a reminder, both days are the 29th and 30th, Friday and Saturday. So Saturday at 11 a.m., you'll be able to walk in. Uh, if you have your two-day ticket, show your flash wristband, you'll be good to go. Uh, and you get to – this is like the actual, like, expo day. So okay. if you've been to some of those style events in the past where you have – vendors all have different booths and you can hang out. Uh, the biggest difference is with, with this is we didn't want it to be a trick-or-treat event. We wanted you to have the most time with manufacturers to ask questions, hang out, take pictures, do whatever, and not wait in line all day. So you can get 20 cigars when you walk in the door, and you're going to be able to hang out with all of the different manufacturers that are there all day. We're going to have a food truck pavilion on that day where you can buy food. Uh, we have three food trucks. You know, we have people coming from all around the country. Um, so we wanted to have some of that New England style fare. So you have one happy clam that's going to have your lobster roll fix, your seafood, and then your regular, uh, you know, burgers, dogs, all that kind of stuff. You're going to have Buxton pizza, so you have a pizza truck, and then you have Kowloon, which is, I think that's good for the locals of this, for the out of towners. But, uh, if you don't know about Kowloon, I mean, man, Mitchell, you don't know about Kowloon. Yeah. Well, I, I watch the show, so I hear I hear uh, you know Dave talk about it a lot. Unless you're from New England, or if you've traveled here enough, man, you just don't know. I mean, Kowloon yeah. is very special. I mean, you're talking about Chinese food. This isn't your local Chinese place. This isn't like PF Chang's. It isn't your little local hangout spot, like the little hole in the wall place you get takeout from. I mean, this place is legendary, and it's just so unique. And arguably some of the best Chinese food um, around well, that there I'll, is. Yeah, I'll have to come. Being being half Chinese, you know, I it's uh, yeah. I'll, I'll have to I'll I'll have to judge it myself. I've been to a lot here in here in BC. We have a lot of Chinese food, like insane amounts. It's it's probably next to sushi, and it's probably like one of the most common things you'll find on a, on a road of, of, uh, of restaurants. Yeah. I so. just couldn't help but hype yeah. that up. Cause I mean, that's when I saw you guys had the Kowloon truck, I'm like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That popped, that, that popped damn. a lot of people, especially like a lot of the, the reps who used to be in the area that are now, I, like I know Carney was stoked when we got that. Oh, uh, Carney know, loves Kowloon. Guys, but <laughs> I had never been to Kowloon until like three weeks ago. Dave and I went. We went to. Uh, we actually went to a, a live podcast. It was like a, a wrestling uh, a podcast. We went there to the show, and it was awesome. I'm, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not the biggest Chinese uh, food guy, uh, but it was great. I love all of it. So they'll be there on site, and then uh, at noon. They'll do the live Cigar Authority podcast right from the uh, right from the expo, so you can watch the show live. And then we'll have some live music going on also after the show. And then at uh, four o'clock, 
Uh, we have the Micro Wrestling Show. So the Micro Wrestling All-Stars will be there from, uh, I think we're doing four matches. It's going to be a great show to wrap up the show. And uh, yeah, there'll be some special guests, some big surprises, but you got to be there to find out. Oh, okay, okay. Special guests. Special guests and big surprises. Are those two related or are they separate? <laughs> I can't say much more. Oh man, oh man. Has anyone guessed? Has anyone guessed the special guest so far? Do oh, good question. Oh, people have guessed, but I've never told them if they were right or wrong. Hmm. Oh, I can't. Okay. okay. I, I I can't. I haven't. I haven't the egg. Signed in blood. Wow. This must that be was good. Sign, it, was signed, it, it was actually. It was signed. It was signed uh, digitally, actually. But, uh, uh, pretty close, pretty close. Though. With the stroke of a cursor, <laughs> yeah. signed away. In yes. That's right. <laughs> well, Dan, let's let's pause for a second. We got to do the news really quickly, and then we'll come right back to you. Our news this week is once again brought to you by our friends at McAuliffe Cigars, featuring the new McAuliffe Black, rated 91 at SmokeyTobacco.com. Check it out today, McAuliffe Black. It's a blackout. Um, speaking of McAuliffe. Um, We've had a lot of staffing stories lately, and I don't know what it is, but I guess everyone's just switching into, up their jobs right now. End of the year, maybe. Maybe people are getting ready yeah. to like kind of get. It's an early. It's an early um, trade show next year, so I think people are trying to get things rolling so that they have things set up for the trade show next year. I feel like yeah, trying to get like all go... situated before then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of action definitely going on. Um, well, we got the uh, news today from El Septimo. Um, which has been a, a a company that gets frequently mentioned on this show and, and many others, um, but I don't, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher his last name too because right? I'm I'm horrible with names, but Austin Borkstead, I believe that's how you say that. Uh, Austin Borkstead leaves McAuliffe Cigars to join El Septimo. El Septimo announced today that it or El Septimo. I know people say it both ways, but uh, they announced today it has hired a seasoned sales executive Austin Borstead to support its continuous sales growth and expansion through U.S. retail centers. Austin has joined El Septimo as sales manager of Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Um, I know that this is, I think, the sixth staffing story just on El Septimo that we've gotten, I think, in the last I want to say like 13 months, 14 months. Yeah, I was going to say the year. Um, I know that, and it, and it seems to me like a lot of the times that they they take some uh, like VPs or they'll take, you know, directors or um, a couple of sales reps. But if I remember correctly, uh, they, they take some top people too. And they're taking them from a lot of big companies. You know, I know that they took somebody from, um, they, they took they took someone hey, from Rocky? Ashton. They took someone from El Septimo. I think they took two from Rocky. They took one from um, Calif now, and there might even been one from. Um, there was like one more. There was another one, too. Was there maybe one from Jewish State? I can't remember. Um, yeah. I can't remember, but I know that there's been a lot of them, and they've been really building this sales team um, over the last, you know, year or so. And they said they even said uh, in their press release that they will be announcing other hires as they believe that 2023 will be their biggest growth year yet. Uh, on a somewhat related note, uh, they also just opened up a uh, El Septimo Lounge, which is also the new now location of the fourth of the fourth location of Corona Cigar Co. in Sarasota, Florida. So they are um, <clears throat> they're out there. They're out there like a wildfire. Would would you say El Septimo is this has been the largest opening of brand branded stores ever for for a cigar manufacturing brand? Like I know Davidoff had a pretty big push. I know a few other brands have Casa done Monte it, Cristo. but would you say this Monte Cristo? But would you say this is getting up there to be one of the biggest, like in such a short period of time too? Well, see, I I, have, I haven't been around the industry long enough. To say, you know, I wasn't there, you know, mm -hmm. for all of the, the the CDMs and the the DOGs to open. Um, I need some of the age back it, on the show. But but it but it. it, it, it <laughs> damn, you're you're attacking him tonight. I'm not even saying. I made one joke, like, and now you're just like, I'm gonna take the torch. Um, but I, to be honest with you, he hasn't been around as long as as I thought either. And 
uh, he might he might not know, but uh, but I, I would well, I was say maybe more like Coop or something. No. Oh, Coop! I mean, that's ancient times. So I mean, you want to talk about Coop? That's he he would definitely know. He has been around since the dawn time. Um, He's got the encyclopedia of memory there for. <laughs> yeah, and then I mean, if 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 Dave was on the show, I mean, that's like you know Gandalf, mm. Gandalf or Albus Dumbledore, the Grand Wizard who's yeah, been around centuries, for hundreds of years. Centuries. You know, he was there, Centuries. you know, when Jesus broke the bread. I don't know. I'm not as biblical as some people, but <laughs> you get the point I'm trying to make. So, um, but yeah, no, I don't know. But I would say if I had to make a guess, yeah. I'd say it's probably, if not the most, and maybe the second most. I mean, they've opened a lot of stores very quickly, and I know that they're yes. continuing to do so. Um, and they have let that be known. Um, they let it be known just with the hirings that they've had, with the, just the announcements of what they've open for lounges so far um the retailers that have taken it, it, it it's grown by storm but it, the other thing about this too and i've had this conversation with a lot of people who've been around the industry a long time is they're not the also they're also not the first brand that kind of comes out and rapidly expands very quickly out of the gate and then yeah just disappears because maybe it was too much too fast now i don't know we'll see we'll see I, only time will tell time will tell you know, it, it really could go either way. Um, but I know for sure those who've been around have told me that's not the first time they've seen something like this. Um, and more often than not, not that I'm saying that I expect this to happen, but a lot of times brands come out of the gate, they go real fire fast, and then they just disappear. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. Uh, time, like I said, time will tell. Um, we'll see how it all unfolds. But that was our news for the week. Let's get back to Dan. I'm going to leave him sitting there for too long. Dan, welcome back. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry to make you wait, but uh, you know, as you know, yeah. No gotta, problem. Gotta do hey, the news. I, you know the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you never know what you're gonna find out on this show. Uh, but anyway, back to uh, back to the topic at hand. Um, oh, uh oh, uh oh. Look who is watching in the shadows. Coop, I heard that. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> you call his name and he is here. Uh, Coop's like he really is. It was, he, it was a compliment. He's like Voldemort. You can't he say just his knows name so much. You would... <laughs> he's like Beetlejuice. Or yeah, like Beetlejuice. You say his name too many times, he shows up. <laughs> yeah, that was a compliment. You know, you, fake... you just know so much about the industry. Fake Alan Rubin's the same way. If you say his name too many times, I was gonna, times, I was gonna say it, but up. I didn't want to say it because then he would show up. You know. <laughs> the difference is though, when Coop shows up, it's nice because it's like, oh shit, I didn't know. And then Alan shows up, and then he just, you know, he just goes on and on and on. And it's like, all right. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, <laughs> so Dan, earlier in the show, we talked about. Um, just some of the people you had coming to the event, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and I know that I have a list here in front of me of, of some of the names and some of the brands. I mean, Nick Perdomo is going to be there, Christian Aroa, Terrence Riley, Justo Aroa, uh, Jose Dominguez. Um, is it, how do you say, is it Gilly from Yaya? Uh, Gia from Gia. Yaya. Yeah, Carlos. Um, Yay. Oliver will be there representing United. Uh, JT from Davidoff, Rick Rodriguez, Nesta Miranda, Eric Newman, Nish Patel, uh, Tony and Carson Serino, uh, the Jonathan M. Carney, Vice President of Sales, LaFleur Dominicana will be there, um, Rafael Nadal, Glenn Case and Jared Trudeau, and, as, and uh, of course, rounding it out at the bottom is Jorge Padron. Uh, that is, that's a star-studded lineup in terms of the cigar industry. Yeah, yeah, excited to see everybody there. You know, I mean, a lot of these people had always been a part of the anniversary party, right? It's not much of a different list. You know, George yeah. Pagrone has always uh, come, Raphael, um, all the United guys have always been there. So, and, you know, Nick Romo, of course. So, excited to have them a part of the expo the first year as well. And uh, yeah, it's uh, 18 different uh, manufacturers. Um, selected tobacco will also be there, but unfortunately, uh, Nelson uh, can't make it because of uh, these restrictions. But uh, selected tobacco will be on site as well, so it's a uh, it's a star studded list for sure. Yeah, it's it's and, really cool, uh, and it's nice for the consumers to be able to go to these events. And um, it's nice because I know you guys didn't want to do the trick or treating thing. So you're kind of just giving everybody the cigars up front. So now instead of like just going through and getting the cigar and having to like keep moving along, they can go up and yeah. they can mingle with these people and meet the people that, you know, they don't get a lot of face time with, you know, people like us in the industry, yeah. you know, we, we talk to these people all the time, but you know, for the average consumer, like this is like the only opportunity that most of them get to spend time with them. And, and now they have like this 
the max amount of time that they could get, you know, talking to them and, and asking questions maybe and, and just getting that experience, which I think is really important and it's really cool for them. Yeah, you know, and I had done a lot of these events when I was working in all to this where you do these big events and you hang out cigars all day. And it's it's a great time, but you know, if you want to hang out with you know, Raphael, you may be only seeing him for a few minutes because there's a hundred people behind you in line and uh, you spend all day in line. It's like, look, I like Disney world as much as Carney does, but I, I get fast pass. I don't want to wait in line. Right. <laughs> and we wanted to make sure uh, you didn't have to wait in line all day because uh, not only do uh, people not get as much face time with these guys, if you're a cigar consumer, you especially don't get it if you're uh, coming from New England because a lot of the manufacturers don't do big, big events in the Northeast because of the weather we have up here. So, you know, you might be able to see Nick Perdomo once a year at maybe one or two stores or, you know, George Perdron, same idea. Uh, Raphael, you know, they, they all live in South Florida. So they don't come up this way as much as maybe they would spend time in other parts of the country because the weather we have in the Northeast makes it challenging for these, uh, these events to take place. But that's why I picked this time of year. And uh, yeah, you'd be able to spend as much time as you want or as little time as you want. You wanna hang out with your buddies and just have cigars all day. You're more than welcome to do that too. Now, how, how is that going to look? Is it kind of like a, like a long table format where each kind of manufacturer is going to have like their own long table where people can sit at or are manufacturers going to be kind of like at a booth that people are going to kind of go up to to talk to them? Um, do you know what that looks like right now? Yeah, well, it's basically both of those ideas together. So every uh, company is going to have their own booth as part of the expo area of the event. And there's going to be a table there for them to sit and hang out with two chairs on their side or whatever chairs they need and two chairs on the other side. So you can just sit down, hang out, have a cigar, uh, talk about the products, ask some questions. Maybe you want to know if something new is coming out, uh, something you like, something you don't, whatever you want to talk about. They'll be there to talk about with you. We'll also have a, a store on site available so you can shop all the brands who are going to be at the event. You can shop uh, either of the products you got for night one or day two and if you buy a box they'll some of the manufacturers will have swag available that if you bring uh, your box back to the booth they can uh, give you the swag that go with it they can sign the box for you you want to take pictures whatever you want to do so there'll be like a uh, yes. basically because we have a two-day setup uh you know there's a lot of moving parts so the first night will be set up as a dinner and then everyone leaves on friday night and that'll all go away and the next day it'll all be set up for expo style event the wrestling ring will go in all that stuff yep yeah that's awesome i was gonna ask you if you guys were selling stuff because i know some of these events they just were, are like no we want it to be just the cigars you grab and just enjoy those but i know a lot of them they kind of revolve that around you know like you said kind of getting sway grabbing boxes uh, you know, maybe even grabbing stuff that you wouldn't usually get to get to see in a regular store all the time. So, yeah, so you'd be able to purchase uh, out of the 38 cigars that'll be the event. You can, there'll be boxes available of all 38 different cigars, and we'll also have a special event only New England Star Expo cigar, which uh, comes in a box that's shaped like a wrestling ring, 10 count box. It's, uh, I think it's a hundred dollars. It's, uh, it's gonna be nice. So nice. that so that event. Cigar that so that just because I know someone will ask this question later, so I just want to make it clear that that's not included in the ticket. And even if you have a ticket, anyone who no. knows, you still got to buy it separately. Yeah, the, there's only three. Uh, I believe it's 300 boxes available. It'll be available uh, on the first night. So if you're a two day ticket holder, you have your first chance to buy those. That'll be the only uh, star you can buy at the store on the first night. Uh, so if they sell out there, then that's it. But if not, they'll be available on the second day as well. So it's just a, you know, just a commemorative limited edition box. Uh, you know, we post pictures of it on social media. So, uh, but it's nice 10 count, 100 bucks. Uh, it's really good cigar too. I, I've had a few of them already. Wow. Wow. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so, you know, talking, talking about this, I mean, I, it's, it's two days. I mean, and the other thing too is, it's not. I, I try to. Been, I try to stress this too. Um, you know, it, it's not. This is not just a local event. You know, 
this is something that I would recommend, you know, even though it's the first one, I haven't been to it, but I know, I know what you guys are capable of. And, um, you know, I recommend to people, like, Hey, like if you're, if you're within driving distance or even if, you know, you, you just want to fly from across the country, I mean, travel to this event, you know, don't, you know, this, this is, this is one that's worth traveling to. This is not like your local, you know, shops event on a Saturday that, you know, no, this is, this is something different. This is something very special and unique and the experience you're going to get, um, you know, like I said, I've been to the anniversary parties and people have traveled for that too. So, I mean, uh, it, it's definitely something you don't want to miss and especially going to both days. I mean, um, the, 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 the night one, the dinner party, you know, that alone is, is, is an awesome event. You'll have such a great time. Um, and then, you know, the, the expo day on Saturday, I mean, it, there's going to be a lot to keep you busy there and, uh, there's, there's a lot going on there. And, and then the, you guys got the micro wrestling, which when I first saw that, I was like, wow, <laughs> I, I was like, damn, that really is different. And, but part of me was kind of like, you know, I know Dave is a wrestling guy. So I'm like, that kind of didn't surprise me. Cause I'm like, I know Dave was probably like really into that because I know I, I I've heard him talk about wrestling and like old school wrestlers from like when he was a kid, like on the scar authority. Um, so I was kind of like, yeah, I could definitely see like Dave being really into that. Cause I know Dave likes wrestling and, um, that's truly unique. And I, and I've seen those guys on social media and some of the things they do and, it is. It's interesting, and uh, that was that was that was kind of cool to see. I was like, "Oh, damn! <laughs> wow, this is uh, yeah. this is really happening." Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah for sure. And you know, and I'm I'm a big wrestling guy myself. And uh, it's funny when we started planning this and putting everything together, I was like, "All right, well, what are we gonna do uh, on day two? And Dave was like, "We got the micro wrestling all stars." And I was like, "Great, I'm in. It sounds perfect to me." Uh, it's a perfect fit for this event. And uh, yeah, like you said about traveling to the event, we have people coming from 23 different states. I think it's probably more now, but the last time I, I looked, uh, I think, well, I did a graphic, I think sometime around July, it was 23 different states. And that's like Arizona, California, all around the country. And we have people coming from Canada. So it is definitely a, a tent pole event, you know, drawing people in from all around, which is it's great, it's exciting. Um, you know, because they have a big audience um, to pull from and, you know, it's exciting to uh, be a part of, you know, it's because it's something different. You want to be at the first one. You can't say you were at the first if you're not there. The inaugural, the inaugural for sure. And everybody it's, wants uh, to be yeah. number one. And yeah, it's it's really cool. Like, it's, it's not that far from the Canadian border. And honestly, like, I think there was a couple of decently large cigar events uh kind of on the eastern side of canada um but i think that was like seven or eight years ago and nothing has really happened in the entire country since then uh because they they banned all the indoor smoking in canada i think about right 10 years ago i want to say and since that's happened it's just been nearly impossible to create the buzz around getting things up here in canada to to, to build an event like this and yeah, it's a great opportunity for people in Montreal, Toronto to zip right over. Like theoretically, you can drive there. Um, no problem. Uh, obviously, the flight's like probably 30 minutes, maybe an hour and you're yeah. right there. So I, I expect probably as this grows, you'll probably notice a large uh, portion of Canadian smokers heading down to that because uh, on the on the West Coast, like I said, a lot of guys from here where I'm from, they go down to the, the big smoke. I'd say that's like their their main right. event, and we have a good crew of people that go down there. But on the East Coast, they have they have nothing until until now. They've got uh, they've got this super close by, yeah. and you know I'll. Uh, I was going to ask you that question too, like because I don't think we've ever really talked about it. Like, are there even any cigar events in Canada? <laughs> like, because so, I feel like you've never mentioned anything, and I'm like, and then knowing so, what I know, like I'm like, oh shit, I don't think there are. It, it is there there are little ones like um there's little ones like we have a race course here and it's an outside race course so they'll do like a cigar day where you're allowed to come and there's like a section where you can be at the the, the horse race course and and smoke cigars um we also do one event it's called a uh, whiskey cigar and they combine uh the whiskey industry with the cigar industry and again it's an outdoor event though and I think they have like a specific section that you're allowed to smoke in, but you can't just roam around 
and enjoy it. But I don't, I, I, it's been, I like, I want to say about 10 years ago, we used to get some manufacturers to come up. I think, uh, I think actually, I'm, I'm not a hundred from developing pallets used to help run something in Alberta that used to be really big. But again, this was before my time of kind of being really into things. And uh, yeah, I want to say it was close to 10 years ago. So it's been a really long time. And like I said, I think, I think this is a really good opportunity for, for people to go experience that. And like I said, star studded lineup, like star studded the, you know, Padron is huge here. Um, you know, people are starting to really get into some of those boutique things like Sokka stuff. And, uh, even, you know, more recently, a lot of people have actually been, been heading down South and grabbing some selected tobacco stuff and, uh, yeah, just being able to access that and, you know, meet the people around that. Obviously, like you said, this year, Nelson won't be there, but hopefully we can get things, get things ironed out for next year. You know, it's funny. And you mentioned Steve and I'm like, I'm that, you know, it's, I'm like surprised that Steve Saka wasn't on the list. Yeah, well, I didn't make the list. <laughs> no, I, you know? I know. I was, I was just, I was thinking. I'm like, but you know, I'm like, damn, Steve's on the list. I'm like, Steve lives like 20 minutes away from yeah. there. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly where yeah. Dunbarton is. Yeah. Where is Dunbarton? Is yeah, it well? Is it north? How far north is that? I'm a Rhode Island guy. I barely, I know how to get to Salem. In New Hampshire. That, <laughs> anything else is, is difficult. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, basically, as we talked about, there's a lot of, you know, touchstones back to uh, the anniversary party. And uh, we wanted to do this first expo with the manufacturers who were involved with the anniversary party for all those years. So that's why, as I mentioned, when we did the list, it's very similar to the anniversary parties because it's, pretty much everyone who's, who's done those events. And uh, yeah, so as time goes on, I'm sure some manufacturers who did it this year maybe won't do the next year or the following year, and we're probably gonna have some new people come in in the future. So it's, a, it's one of those things that always change and you know keep it interesting and we'll see what happens. It's never, you never say never, right, going forward. Absolutely. Now, Dan, I don't, I don't, sorry, I can't, I can't remember if you actually mentioned this or not, but for those who are traveling, you also had hotel, blocks and, and stuff available for people to book yeah. as well, right? Yeah, we had hotel room blocks. They all closed, I think, uh, Labor Day uh, week because, um, you know, the other thing that's going on this time of year in New England is it's leaf keeping season. So mm -hmm. they sell a lot of hotel rooms just for that. So we put all, uh, all the ducks in a row back in January, early February. One of the first things we did was lock down the room blocks because we knew it was going to be hard for people traveling to get one, just get a room, and then two, get a room at a, at a good rate. So uh, a lot of people got great deals uh, on some local hotels. There's a lot of options within maybe 15, 20 minutes from the venue. And for a lot of people traveling, it's going to be an event to go to because we're about 45 minutes, not even, from Logan Airport in Boston, International Airport. So yeah, I know uh, a lot of the people coming from Canada, I think are from Toronto. So that's like, yeah, about a 40 minute yeah. flight. If you wanted to drive it, it's about 10 hours, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people coming from Toronto. I'm sure as the list has changed, you'll see some people from Montreal as well. But yeah, uh, easy to get in, easy to get out because it's right off of uh, 93, which goes right to Logan. So Right, right. Yeah, easy to get to. If you're not from the area, you know, you'll land at Logan, you'll leave the airport, you get on 93 and just keep on riding, just keep on going and you'll get there straight shot. Yep. Uh, very yeah. easy, very easy to navigate. Um, but Dan, I mean, I th unless I missed anything, um, I actually had a quick question. I know we mentioned food, but, uh, are there going to be drinks available? Yeah, so we have uh, we'll have bars available. We're partnering with uh, it's a company called Prancy Pony. They have a beer truck in uh, New Hampshire where they can uh, serve at events like whatever food truck style thing. So they're gonna have uh, a beer truck for us, and then inside the tent we'll have uh, if you want some cocktails, and then there'll be soft drinks available as well. Awesome! Very very cool! Very very cool! I, I just yeah. remembered actually. One of the other things, and I think th this is only for the VIP ticket holders, but there's also an after party, right? Correct. Yeah, VIP ticket holders, there's an after party at the Nashua store after the event's over. Um, so people will leave and head right there. It's about 
15 minutes from uh, from the uh, venue. And that's also one of the hotel blocks we had was the Sheridan in Nashua, which I had stayed before and was great. And it's literally less than 90 seconds down the road from the uh, Nashua store. So I know a lot of people booked there. So uh, if you missed out on the room blocks and you're still coming to the event, uh, I would check out maybe if you can get a room at the Nashua Sheridan because uh, – Never know who you'll pop into there. Cause I, I know a lot of manufacturers stay there and have a good bar downstairs and you can smoke outside. So um, I recommend that if you're still looking to come up and you don't have a place to stay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I, de I definitely want to bring that up uh, for those who might be uh, last minute, you know, planning a trip. Uh, there's, there's definitely places to be. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, all in all, I mean, it sounds great. I mean, especially if you're a VIP, I mean, you're getting to go to everything. I mean, you get Friday night, Saturday, you got the after party um, and everything in between, right? Uh, chance to win stuff. You're getting cigars at the door, rubbing elbows with some people, watching some wrestling. I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on there. Um, sounds like an awesome event. And uh, I, I do wish you guys nothing but the best. I hope it's a great event. Uh, I hope it goes well. I hope it is... Uh, I hope it exceeds all of the expectations, and then next year it's uh you know, it's round two, and we'll see what you guys come up with for that. So, um, but like you yeah. said, it's the first one, and the first one's always the learning experience. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, whatever, you, maybe you take some things from this one, and and then you apply it to next year, and we'll see. But we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves here. We still want to see how the first one goes. So, uh, just you know, congrats yeah. on that, and and good luck with it too. It's uh, it's it's very exciting. Yeah, it's going to be fun, you know. Uh, like you said, sometimes the first one to be a learning experience, but that's the fun part, you know. Right. I, I'm doing events all these years. I love when things go wrong. Not major things, but I like when things go wrong because a lot of times nobody sees it but people backstage, and you learn and everyone gets better, but it's uh, knowing how to think on your feet and have a good time. But, yeah, it's going to be a great event. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, um, like I said, there's probably if you're watching live, there's a handful of tickets two days available. Uh, if you go to two guys, cigars.com, number two guys, cigars.com, sign those last two day tickets. You're not going to be disappointed, but they'll be sold out tomorrow. I'm sure if, uh, you're not, uh, going to the two days, you don't get in in time. I would say get your one day ticket, get your 20 cigars, come see the micro wrestlers, come watch the cigar authority live, hang out with all the manufacturers. And you're going to be leaving this event wondering what we're going to do next year. I can guarantee that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, Dan, awesome. with, with the with the, the little bit of time we have left on the show, um, outside of the Cigar Expo, I, I just wanted to touch on a couple of uh, of other things that I figured you could speak to while you were here. Um, you know, we caught up with you at, at PCA uh, a few months ago out in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, you were at the United booth, obviously, and I know you guys, as always, I mean, look, anyone who follows our content, our shows, our editorials and stuff we write uh, when it comes to the trade show, but also when it just comes to the brands and companies and, you know, just everybody uh, as a whole for the, for the whole year uh, United has been at the top of that list for the last couple of years. And, you know, with the stuff that comes out, the things you guys come up with, the things you do, I mean, it's, it, that is definitely one of the biggest topic of conversations all year especially around the trade show, but all year. And then end of year, too, uh, is United. I mean, it just everything that I mean, last year, you know, we saw the debut of the Red Anchor. This year, you guys expanded it, and you guys have, I want to say, four sizes of that cigar now, or is it five? Uh, four sizes, five if you count the event size, Cooper. Um, we launched two of uh, two of the three sizes already, the, uh, the Gunner and the Captain, and then the Commodore 7x55 will be coming out soon, yep. Which has been exciting. I mean, you know, and then you guys have the Firecracker series, which, I mean, has been getting more and more popular, I think, as years go on, is um, more and more people know about it, and it can, it's the different brands that you guys work with to, to come up with the limited edition Firecrackers every year. I mean, you've, you've done it with Perdomo, LFD, um, Christoph, who I know you used to work for once upon a time. Um you know, Nick Melillo's made some. Uh, Steve Sock has made some. I mean, it, these these have kind of become. It's a very cult following kind of thing. I mean, when the firecrackers come out, and I and I know that they usually sell pretty quick too. I mean, um, it, it's exciting to see. And I know now you guys got the black bomb firecracker um, that we saw. I've got the pledge here, EP Carrillo. The pledge EP Carrillo. Uh, you know, 
very popular blend. Now that's in a firecracker. Uh, it's, it, the Big Poppy was a firecracker. We saw that last year, I want to say. Uh, the Bandolero firecracker. Yep. I mean, it's it's really cool. It's exciting. And, you know, I know that we, we've already seen so much um, come from you guys. And then, you know, we, we've seen uh, on the selected tobacco side, which, you know, United distributes, you know, the, the Atabe Black NFT cigar is finally actually coming to fruition and that that will be available to um i want to remind me on that so that's going to be anyone who owns an nft has the right to purchase those and then all of the united Correct. lounges will get it as well as a just as a store allocation yeah um i believe they get a smaller amount of the the uh United lounges, so that's the Atabay Lounge uh, at Industrial, the Red Anchor Lounge at Two Guys Nashua, uh, the Byron Square Lounge in uh, Chicago, out in the suburbs of Chicago. So they'll get them, and yeah, the NFT. If you have a the you know, box NFT, uh, you can uh, also get the Atabay Black. Nice, nice, nice. Well. Dan, I just want to thank you for being here with us tonight. I mean, I, I think we've we've covered kind of everything, unless we left anything out that you wanna that you wanna share with us. Um, just yeah, just no, been a busy I mean, year to, for you. To touch, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, just to touch on the United side too. Yeah, I mean, it's been as exciting as the New England Cigar Expo has been, and will continue to be. So is United. I mean, it's been a great year so far. Uh, done a great job with so many new projects coming out. Oliver right now is in the Dominican working on stuff. Uh, he's done a great job with, you know, we have the United National Maduro uh, re-blending re in, in the round. You have the, uh, the Black Bomb that came out the show, the new sizes of Red Anchor, which are already, uh, the Black Bomb Red Anchor just hit stores a couple weeks ago, uh, already doing really well. And then so many new exciting things coming out with the selected tobacco side, the Out of Bay Black, the Alfonso Grand Selection, maybe uh, Cigar of the Year again. This, you know, I, I don't know if it will make the cutoff, but uh, it depends. You know, maybe it depends on when it hits those store shelves. That's 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 yeah, the big yep. part. Uh, if, if you can get it in before the end of October, it, it'll be eligible. But uh, November one, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it, there's a lot of exciting. stuff stuff going on at United and Selected Tobacco. And it's uh, exciting to be a part of the team and plenty of uh, new, fun, exciting stuff to come. It's United's been growing a lot and, uh, you know, it's a testament to our retail partners and the team over at United Cigars. It's a, it's a great experience for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's been exciting to watch you guys. It was exciting when I when I heard you, you, you were now involved with them too. And uh, I've known you for a few years now, so... You know, really, just it's it's been a it's been a busy year for everyone over there, and uh, you know, congrats on it. But also, you know, keep it up and uh, keep it rolling. And uh, you know, Selected's got a cigar of the year. You know, Alfonso Extra Añejo number four is currently yeah. our 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 champion right now. That's uh, that's our 2022 cigar of the year. Um, I know that some other publications had it at uh, number one or, or really high on lists, and yep. um, I wouldn't be surprised if you, you saw it top some lists again this year. I don't know. Um, so we'll see. It's uh, it's a great cigar. You know, if you haven't had one, check it out. Uh, but Dan, thanks for thanks for being here with us today. I appreciate it. Uh, it's always great to see and talk to you. And as always. I'll bring this up for you guys because uh, it's also where you can get your tickets. Head over to the number two guys cigars.com. Not only for all your cigar needs, obviously, but to get your tickets for the New England Cigar Expo. Uh, and if they have any, and if anyone has any questions, they they need a contact person. Who's the person they should reach out to? Or who should they call? Yeah, they can reach out. To, they can reach out to me. Uh, if you go to New England Cigar Expo on Facebook or any cigar expo. On uh, Instagram, you can DM us there, or you can email me at dan at unitedcigargroup.com. There you go. And there's your point of contact. So if you guys have any questions, reach out to Dan, and he'll uh, help you with whatever you need. But that's going to be our show this week, and I appreciate everyone who's who's watching along with us, whoever's listening along. Uh, shout out again to Tim McCabe. He's the winner of our McAuliffe Black Toro box giveaway. Um, I've already been in touch with him, and I believe McAuliffe has already got those out to him but also stay tuned for our next giveaway from Drew Estate which I will be getting up on the website very soon and when it does go live don't worry everyone will know but we talked about that on spare notes over the weekend for those who uh, maybe didn't see, catch that episode yet but we got three special items we got a couple of ashtrays I think a, 
I want to say there's an H99 ashtray, there's a League of 10 ashtray, and I think an Undercrown 10 humidor. So um, those three winners will be selected for one of each of those. Uh, that will go up soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe everywhere you get your podcasts on all of the podcast platforms, as well as our YouTube channel and all of our social media. And as always, head over to SmokeItTobacco.com for more news, reviews, and updates from the cigar industry. Thank you for being here with us tonight, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good night.